Hi, and welcome to the Colorado Hunter and our introduction to pocket knife field dressing. What you'll be seeing on this video is a few clips we have taken over the past couple of years on field dressing elk. We chose elk because they are one of the largest big game animals sought after by the most people. And what you'll learn you can apply to any big game animal. The complete video is still a work in process because we want to provide you close up how to detail on each procedure so you'll be able to go anywhere you want, hunt any animal you want, take the minimum tools you want, and take care of your animal like a professional. I hope you enjoy our video. Man, that's a beautiful country out there, isn't it? Uh, my name is Gary Ellis. Best part about this country, there's a lot of elk, muleys, black bear, and there's a few mountain lion roaming around out there. If you want one of those critters, that's where you got to go to get it. Only trade-off is, if you get one down there, you're not going to be able to drive your truck down there and haul it back to camp. You're going to have to take care of it down there. I'm going to teach you how to field dress an animal right where it lays. Talk to you later. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to do it with just a pocket knife. Hi everybody, this is Gary Ellis. Third time is the charm. This is my third elk I've worked on this year trying to make you this video about pocket knife field dressing. The other two, I didn't have anybody with me. Now I got my good buddy Bobby with me, and he was gracious enough to let me clean his animal for him. Thanks, Gary. I think he's going to like that. Anyway, we're going to do a, a pocket knife field dressing. And the reason we're doing this video is not necessarily to show you how to clean something with a pocket knife. I mean, that'd be really kind of ridiculous, wouldn't it? Taking nothing but this out in the woods and cleaning your elk or any animal with a pocket knife. The whole emphasis of this video is to show you that this is really all that is required to properly field dress your animal. You've seen some of the shots I've had about some of the scenery out here. We're in a very deep hole. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm thinking about calling one of my buddies with a helicopter to get us out of here. That's how deep this hole is. Well, the whole purpose of this video is to show you that you can take care of an animal anywhere. You can't, you can't drive your pickup in here, guys. You can't pull your four-wheeler down here. You're not going to be able to have your buddies just grab it and throw it in the, in the, in the trunk or anything like that or in the, in the bed of your truck. This is some serious, hardcore hunting here. If you can take care of an animal with this, you can go into holes like this where we're at and find you a trophy animal. You won't be limited by your lack of skill. Once you watch this video, you'll have all the skills necessary to go anywhere you want into a big, deep hole like this in the Colorado mountains and find you a trophy animal. And you won't be intimidated by not knowing what to do once you get him down. Good deal, huh? So the whole purpose is for me to show you how you can do this with just a pocket knife. I don't need a saw, don't need anything except this pocket knife. Now I'm going to give you the tools to know how to do this so you can go anywhere you want in the whole country, get you an animal, and not be afraid to go down a hole anywhere, take care of it, get it out, get it on the grill at home. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started with that. Now I went ahead and cut the hide all the way up to the throat. Now since this is a bull, Sometimes you, if you get a big enough bull, you'll want to cape it out. But we're not going to be caping this one out, but I'll show you what we, you would do anyway. This cut that I'm fixing to show you on the hide is the same cut you'd make whether it's a cow or a small bull or a big bull that you want to make a shoulder mount. Now I went ahead, like I said, I went ahead and cut all the way up because we're not going to be doing the shoulder mount, but I'm going to show you the other cuts anyway. You just only be going up to where the rib cage starts on the belly. And if you're going to do a shoulder mount, you don't go up any further than that. So I'm going to go ahead and show you all the cuts you'd make for that because it's going to be the same anyway. So I'm going to start right here where the rib cage starts. I'm going to cut this all the way back to the backbone. All right. And from there, you cut up to 
the front shoulder. That's exactly what I'm going to do right now. Once I do that, I'm going to take all this hide off and I'm peel the whole front section all the way back, expose this shoulder, take the shoulder off. Close all that. Now I'm going to go right here, straight to the shoulder. Now if you hear somebody scream, that's because I got him. Now you can start up here and come down, but I'm just going to go up. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Or a bull. Still good. I'm gonna go around now. Hey, what? Well, that little blade's pretty sharp. I might be able to shave with it. You think I need to shave? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you noticed or not, but we had to move our animal a little bit. The spine was down too low. Uh, right down here, as you can see, a lot of red. Down here, the way this animal's angled, uh, this is where we think the bullet probably came out at. So it's a little messy down there. Other than normal. We're going to take off the hind quarter right now. Bobby, if you'll grab that, pull it back. What I'm going to do... You can see the leg coming around right through here. It's going right down through here. So I'm going to cut right down there, and all I'm going to do is just follow the hip bone <laughs> with my blade. That's all you got to do. There's a joint down there. You cut through the joint. You finish cutting the rest of it off, following the, the bone around. leg just comes right off. you got to push back a little bit. Make sure you don't hit the gut. I mean, if you do, it's okay. So you can feel it right there. So I'm kind of angling my blade in just a tad bit. Now there's a bone, a hip bone right here. You can't see it, but it's right there. That little ridge right there separates all that, separates all that. The back strap is on the inside. Oh, excuse me, the back strap right here along the, the spine comes all the way and dead ends right to this hip bone. This hip bone right here, you can feel it. Same hip bone here. The legs from here over. Back strap comes here and stops. And the uh, loin is nestled right down in this area also. So I'm going to cut on this side. 
fall it down just like that and I'm going to work my way around. At least I'm going to try to. Cut through some blood vessels here. There's a the backbone right there I'm just hitting. I'm falling this down. Now I'm going to try to come on this side. Follow the bone all the way around. And the camera has changed angles a little bit because I'm on this side of the animal instead of that side. If you notice on that side of the animal, I went all the way down to the backbone. I followed the bone all the way around here. Now I'm going to try to miss the guts. I'm not, I'm not going to try to hit those things. I'm going to get as close as possible. But I'm going to work my way down to the bone. And here's where his pelvis at. Is that bone? I'm hitting that bone right there. I'm cutting on that side of his poopy hole. You kids get a laugh, laugh out of that one. Right here is where his poopy hole's at. Matter of fact, it's right there. Nothing but bone now. So I'm going to start working in. Following that bone. You just kind of got to feel it as you go. That's a blood vessel. Look at that. See that right there? That's a ball joint. I'm going to work right around that ball joint. We're right through the ball joint. See that? And as I'm working through the ball joint, I'm going on both sides of it, just following the bone around. You got to feed it with your blade. This is where I was hit at. That's why you see some blood and stuff like that coming out. Twist it this way. There you go, just like that. You notice that goo coming out right there? It's because the bullet went through there. Now, if you notice, see that right there? That leg's off, basically. Here's a ball joint, cut right through there. What you want to do is just just follow the bones around. Now, since he, the bullet went through the guts a little bit, I got to deal with that, unfortunately. That white right there, that's the bone coming out. I'm just falling the bone out. Now you don't have to be meticulous is what I'm showing right here, but I want to show the bone. You ever been to a doctor's office and seen the picture of the human skeleton? Well, this animal is built very similar the same way. And if you can get a picture or look at the skeleton, You can see how it looks. And that's all you gotta do is just follow it. Now he's got his hands full right there because this thing weighs about 100 pounds. 
it's about to come off all the way. Again, I'm just following the bone around is all I'm doing. You ready? Yep. Here it comes. Voila! Cut! <laughs> <laughs> Right, as you can see, we got the hind quarter off. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is take the rest of the hide off, expose the back strap. I'm going to expose it way up here and take the back strap off. Then we're going to take the uh, loin out. All right. Now here's the the spine right through here, and all this meat right here, this big chunk of meat right here, is the back strap. Now some of this stuff, you can just peel away to get out of the way. But what the back strap does, it's nestled right in between the rib cage and the spine. The rib cage comes around through here and meets the spine about three inches that direction. So it forms a little T like that. So if you notice, right through here, is where it all starts at. See, there's the ribs right there, I feel them. That's the ribs. You can even see them right there. See the rib right there, rib right there, rib right there, rib right there. Whoop, that's not the rib. That's where the ribs start at. This is our plate right through here protecting the loins. I'll talk about that here in a little bit. You're going to cut this all the way down till you come to the spine. That way. Then I come in this way from the spine. See that little hip bone right there. Now another thing you can do, you can go up as much, spend as much time as you want to right here getting neck meat. So I'm going to go up to there. I'm going to wander around a little bit. I'm going to get a lot of neck, neck meat. Just cut it all loose. Make really good hamburger. You can probably get an extra 20 pounds of neck meat by going way up here and following the ribs all the way up to the neck. Come way up high on the neck. Now see, this is... Can you hold mm -hmm. that? Got a little hair right here. But you can follow this neck way up here. Get quite a bit of meat. See, I got a whole chunk of meat right through here. I'm trying to take off this critter. A lot of neck meat right there. You can spend as much time as you want there, up there as you want. Uh, peel around, take as slow as your time. Get a lot of extra neck meat. But all things must come to an end sooner or later. So you're going to be tuckered out. Especially if you're way out here in the sticks like this. You've got to figure, well, enough is enough. Yeah. You know, how much can you get off there? So I'm going to start cutting off. One thing you got right there, you got a great big old yellow piece of gristle. That thing's always in the way. So somewhere along the line, you want to cut through that thing, get it out of the way. But see, there's part of it right there, right along the spine. See, that's the spine right there. So 
So now I'm going to cut it on the spine. My cameraman just about biffed it. Look at all that extra. Woo, dog, it's hamburger time. All right. Now I'm just going to kind of work my way down through here. And work my way around. Look at that. That's some mighty fine eating there, folks. Mercy. I'm going to pig out next week. Look at that. Ow! Big old bull size back strap. Now, if you notice, the back strap is gone. I'm going to take out the loin. As you notice also, the animal is not gutted. There's no need, no reason to gut the animal to get everything out. As a matter of fact, the only reason you need to gut an animal is if you like the heart or the liver. Or let's say it's late at night, you're out there all by yourself, you're getting cold, you're tired, you want to go home. Whatever the case is, you don't have time or the strength or the inclination to go ahead and quarter up your animal. So you want to go ahead and gut it to cool it down so you can come back the next day. Uh, also, if you can drive to your animal, then you can gut it right there and haul it back to camp and hang it up and, and take care of it right there. But we're way out here in the sticks, and there's really no need to gut the animal. I don't like the heart. So I'm going to show you how to get the loins out. Then once we'll, we get through with all this, everything I've showed you times two. It's just a repeat. No use showing you how to get the loins out twice or the back strap off twice. I've already showed you this. Now I'm going to show you where the loins at. <coughs> if you notice, this is the rib cage. See those? Those are ribs. Here's the hip joint. In between these two is a loin. It is nestled right behind this little piece of, of bone right through here. If you notice ribs are going this way, but this is a flat piece of bone right through here. Got bone coming up here, bone coming here, bone coming here, bone coming here, and gristle in between. The tenderloin is nestled right down here. So I'm going to show you how to get it out. All you got to do is just get this out of the way. Now I got my uh, muscle man over here, Bobby, to help push this out of the way, but I'm going to show you where it's at. I'm going to start a little bit by working this a little bit. I can push, push this away from the bone to access my lawn. Now if you accidentally hit the, uh, the gut sack, that's okay, nothing you can do about it. I'm just going to try to avoid it. You see the lawn right there? Here it is right here, folks. Now what I'm going to try to do is get it away from the bone here. And the hardest part is getting away from the gut sack on the other side. I'm going to work on this side first. The beauty of getting it out of here is that it's pure, unadulterated, non-bloody meat. Perfect for cooking. All right. Look at that. Woo! Look at that. Just rub my hand down in there. I got some cleanup I got to do down here.
good though. Mm -hmm. All right, Bobby, if you'll stand on here on my right hand side. Now, if you're by yourself, it's a little bit harder. You can put a knee on there and step on it or whatever. As a matter of fact, you can yank it out if you want to. It's just so tender down in there. You just kind of run your fingers on the bottom and uh, tear it off if you want. Look at that. Clean that up, wash it off. That's all you gotta do. Just cook it like that. Marinate it overnight. Cook it out on the grill. Woo! Good tasting. I'm getting hungry just thinking about it. Okay, that's good. When I got here, I found my meat nice and cool with a little bit of a tough texture on it. That means it's drying out. What any critters on it? I guess they finally gave up trying to get through all the boughs here. Anyways, you can see I've taken all my pine boughs that I cut off, laid them on the ground, and I have all my meat laying down here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to debone it, and I'm going to put it in white trash bags. Now, the reason I use white trash bags, even though they're not perforated or anything, they are white, my meat is already cool, and I'm just going to have a, about an hour and a half hike out of here through the trees. Uh, the cloth ones are a lot heavier even though they are porous. But my meat is already cool so I figured I'm good to go on that. So I'm going to go ahead and begin on this. Uh, my back straps and tender loins I'm going to go ahead and load up. But what I'll be doing is showing you how to properly debone these quarters. Now there's more than one way to skin a cat. I'm just going to show you my preferred way. Now, in many ways, the hind quarter is easier to debone than a front quarter. Main reason is, when I took this thing off, I took it off the joint. And all I have to really do is cut a beeline from this ball joint to the knee joint up here. Just follow this bone up, wrap around this way, wrap around this way. It's really just that simple. Start here. I'm hitting that bone right there. These bees have gotten pretty aggressive. I got bit a little while ago, or stung rather. See, so here's the knee joint that's coming to. Follow that bone. Time I poke down there, I can feel that bone. That's all I'm doing. 
Now I'm going to try to work it around the bone. Now I think I'm going to do over here is I'm going to cut this in the joint all the way across. Right there to the back of the knee. That way I'll be able to follow this around. Just follow the bone around. Never get in a hurry because you don't want to cut your fingers out here. See all these bees? right above the knee here. Just cut that down through there. Follow it underneath the bone. Same here. Come on guys. We work here today. bit of gristle right here so I gotta cut around the gristle. That was part of the knee joint or the ball joint rather. See I'm basically free right underneath here. Notice when I took this leg off, I didn't have to use a hacksaw or anything. I didn't cut through any bone. Find the joint. You're good to go. So there we go on that. Now all I have to do is just take the rest of this off. Voila! Man, this thing sure is heavy. A couple of things to remember. First thing, good backpack. Good, strong, sturdy aluminum backpack. They make packs for this. I prefer my old backpack. It's very lightweight, has a lot of room. Main thing is, it fits my hips just right. The other thing is a couple of trekking poles. These are aluminum, they're very lightweight. If you don't find any of, the, uh, if you don't have any of these, you can always find a stick around somewhere to keep your balance. Balance is very important. You lose your balance, it takes a lot of energy out of you. Last thing, take it good and slow. Steady wins the race. Don't get up in a hurry. There's a lot of weight. It'll wear you out.